Good morning, YouTubers. I finally got caught up on some sleep. It's about 7.15. Some of you may or may not know that uh, ever since I did a bunch of the work this week, my CTIS system has stopped working. I've tested with a brand new CTIS wiring harness, a brand new PCU, uh, known good controllers and they all behave exactly the same uh, you press the setting you want and it just flashes continuously on that setting and it never does anything so I've been reading through a bunch of the service manuals for the CTIS system Spicer made one that's really good it's easier to understand than the TM so this morning I, I started to think back about when this started happening after I changed out my air dryer um, and then I did the welding for the week and then we drove it up to uh, Carnation which is about six hours away I noticed the problems started occurring so what I'm gonna do today is just some simple diagnostics I have visually checked everything and I don't see any problems but I could have a massive air leak somewhere and it leads me to believe that when I broke the connections free from the wet tank I might not have sealed them up as well as I should have, so I'm going to do a soapy water test today. And then I'm also going to test the pressure sensor to make sure that that's working. Because the CTIS won't do anything if the pressure sensor um, isn't closing, so the circuit is closed. So I'm going to test those this morning and uh, take that soapy bottle of water and just start spraying everywhere, see if I've got a leak. And then we'll go from there. Check this out. That's one source of a pretty big leak. And I take that apart and see if there's an O-ring in there or something like in the place. Alright, I got the air governor apart and I've cleaned it up with a brass brush. It doesn't it didn't have an o-ring on it, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to or what the deal is. Let's go out here and look at the uh, other side of it. Oh. So I can't tell if there's an o-ring in there or not. And then it's got a little little diaphragm that sits up in there and then the spring presses against the back side of it here. I think what I might do is just put some RTV around the edge of it. I'm not sure that's a big deal that that was leaking a little bit like that so I'm gonna try that. So I was digging through my Subaru engine rebuild gasket kit extra parts left over and look what I found. I bet that o-ring is gonna be the perfect fit for that little uh, governor so I'm gonna put that on there instead of RTV see if that fixes the leak fit on there no problem it's seated and everything just fine so I'm gonna start the truck back up and uh, see if we get the pressure back up on that check it with the soapy water okay it looks like I got to go out and turn the governor up a little bit I left it loose I wanted to see what the pressure got to uh, and it looks like I'm gonna have to turn it up a bit to get the uh, tanks above 120 PSI So that o-ring Was the perfect fix That's one leak gone so I tested the pressure switch on the tank here and it doesn't look like it's close So that might be part of the issue Although when I put a paper clip or a wire, a jumper wire in the plug, the CTIS doesn't start working again. So I'm not sure. So here's something I did notice. This is the newer harness. And you see how it's got 10 pins? Here's the old harness. It's only using 6 pins. And the layout is different. They do plug in to the connector under the uh, fuse panel but the pins are not right they provide power to the 
unit and that's it. No pneumatic controls or anything. So I swap back to the old cable. Well, got the old cable pulled back in. Uh, no dice. My guess is that that pressure switch is holding up the whole process. And uh, I'll have to get one of those to try and continue to figure out this issue.